If I could give everyone in the world to do an experiment for 30 days, I would ask them to take out a piece of paper and write down every thought that they've been thinking that's standing in the way between their future and where they are right now. Write down every habit or behavior that stops them from becoming the person that is healthy, wealthy, and free and begin to recognize the emotions that keep you in the same state of being and become so conscious of these thoughts, behaviors, and emotions that they wouldn't let any of them slip by unnoticed. Then I would have them write down the thoughts that they do want to fire and wire in their brain. I would like you to describe the characteristics of the great person you want to become and practice rehearsing that person. And then I would say, what emotions would you be feeling in your future self? Because you have to be teaching your body emotionally. Every day, if you practice that diligently and sincerely and just become conscious of who you no longer want to be and keep becoming conscious of who you do want to be that surprises you and leaves you no doubt that it has come from a greater mind, then you will be inspired to do it. And now we understand that we are creators of our life. So how do you feel about that? How does that make you feel? Would you like to try that experiment for 30 days? Do this written exercise? Perhaps you want to really um, want to replay the video because you are going to get a copy of this video. So I want to give you some rules of success, some tips about success. So. Uh, you have to not wait for your healing or your luck to change before you um, start feeling grateful or powerful or enthusiastic. Hello, my very inspiring person. I just want to remind you to book your seat for my December 6th retreat here on the Athens Riviera. December 6th, we're meeting here at Alkyonides, a beautiful seaside venue where we are going to explore manifestation as well as health, fitness, and well being in general. Come along and meet people from all over the world, whether you live here in Greece or whether you're coming in from Dubai or elsewhere. Make sure you book your seat for December 6th, the full one day retreat here in Athens by the beautiful Riviera. We were talking about how people have the greatest intentions in the world, but if you don't combine that with an elevated emotion, it's not going to have an impact in your life. So when you're in September, feeling, um, waiting for, for good luck to happen, for you to feel good, you are going to be in a constant state of longing and needing and neediness. And the, what you can start doing is enter the emotions that you want to have in the future from now. So that's like proactively feeling the emotions that you want to be having. So, so what that does is it lessens the distance between where you are now and what you want to have or manifest in your life. Um, it's not exactly fake it till you make it. It's really entering the state that you want to have. You want to proactively create the reality by elevating your emotions from here and now. And it takes a constant practice. It takes an all day practice. In the Orthodox religion, we say continuous prayer 
ongoing prayer. Okay, prayer is an exercise. It's not something you do once a day. Meditation is not something you do for, you know, half an hour a day or 10 minutes a day. We are talking about constant prayer, constant growth, constant connection with source and feeling that gratitude and that grace that you are receiving from divine power. And then you'll start seeing synchronicity in your life. You'll start to see more um, love, more luck in your life as you enter that deeply emotional relationship with the divine, divine source. And for some people, this may seem like work, but once it becomes a habit of connecting with love in your life, connecting with gratitude in your life, it's going to produce a bigger and bigger wave of good luck because you are creating a wonderful wave of positive energy and you'll be able to actually heal others through your own positive energy. I'm teaching people how to administer a change in energy to even other people from yourself. Some people call it Reiki. Some people call it uh, the energy field. But once you have changed the field within yourself, you can literally change matter. Okay? You may have something like uh, a cyst or a tumor. But this, you have to understand, is just an energy field. It is a dense energy field, but if your energy field can overcome and override that energy field of the tumor, you will start to heal your own self. And this, this is not something out of science fiction. You see this more and more often, uh, spontaneous healing. It's so important um, out of the infinite places that you can place your attention, put it on your heart. And now when you place your attention is actually where you place your energy because we want this center to bloom. 1400, 1300 different chemicals that will go out into the body and start healing your body. You have that capacity. You have nature's medicine chest right inside your own body. Um, all these positive hormones like serotonin, dopamine, little by little, as you place your attention, you become your own healing life force and you're turning your love inward and start healing yourself from your own love chemicals. These are chemicals. It's your own neurochemistry, your own neurochemistry can heal yourself. As your heart begins to bloom, um, you are aroused physically. It's similar to when you're feeling an orgasm in your sexual organs. You basically create uh, love chemicals like oxytocin through your heart and that triggers um, chemicals that will relax your whole body. Um, it causes the arteries in your heart to open up. So your heart is going to be filled with blood and oxygen and nutrients. It's physiological. You're going to feel full. You're going to feel that gushing feel. Um, instead of a hard on like they have in sex, you're going to have a heart on. Okay. It's really uh, like an erection in your own heart. It's a sexual energy that you usually feel in your genitals, you're going to move that energy up to your heart and it's going to make you start sobbing from gratitude and love. It's really a religious experience. You're going to be gushing all these love hormones and what's going to happen is that you are going to be healing your own body from your own heart chemicals, your heart will trigger your own healing and you will no longer be grabbing the, the, the chocolate cake or the ice cream or the 
alcohol or I don't know what other things you break out on or you're addicted to, like cigarettes, um, or even just watching television because what you want to do is become the healing force of your life and there's really no other way to do it than activating your love chakra, your heart chakra by focusing on gratitude to the divine. I mean in I basically I want to share my experience I cry every day. I am moved to tears of gratitude. Tears of gratitude. If you are not crying in your prayer, it's not a deep enough prayer. It's not a deep enough connection. And once you cry from gratitude, it really is like a spiritual orgasm. I, I, I know it might bother people that I compare sexual orgasm with a spiritual orgasm, but that's exactly what it is. You're moving that energy from below, you're moving it to your heart chakra and then to your brain and you start crying. What is What are tears but a, an ejaculation of your liquids, okay, through your eyes, okay? So instead of having an orgasm through your sexual organs, you're having it through your heart and through your mind and higher up. And these are healing chemicals, okay? We're studying what happens. Scientists are studying what happens when you are perceiving the outer environment as a problem. When a problem sees it as a challenge instead of a problem, you actually get energy. They've done brain scans on people who, uh, for, on people who, for example, say, I want to be wealthy or I want to be healthy. What you, you want to be that because you're not it now. So the initiation of going from not it here to it here, you're going to have to climb some steps. There's going to be some blind spots. You're going to have to make it through your blockages. Now you might try it out and it doesn't work. And that's because there's a part of you that still is unconscious, that's blocking you. And so what is it about you and the circumstance you are in that you are feeling about that circumstance? And that feeling is causing you to think about it. And so, for example, you have thoughts like, oh, that's impossible. I'll never change. Things will never change. Um, you have this block in you and you really need to uh, overcome that feeling of separation, okay? Because what you have to do is bring your future ideal situation into your present. Your energy right now is the same every day. As long as your energy is the same every day, nothing's going to change. And nobody changes anything until they change their energy here and now. So what piece of knowledge, what piece of information, what would love do, what would greatness do? You might say, I don't know, but certainly someone in history there exists who inspires you, okay? Look for inspirational people and look it up, study. How did those people think? How does Mother Teresa think? How does Gandhi think? How do people who've made it from rags to riches think? Okay, they have a different way of thinking. Maybe you have a wrong view of wealth, okay? Maybe you have some blockages to do with wealth or health. Just figure out what those blockages are. Watch your thoughts, observe your thoughts. Don't let these emotional vampires suck your energy. Okay, so you have to ask yourself, what would I do if I was rooted deeply in faith? How could I do it differently next time? Okay, it does take inner work. Okay, it takes inner work. It doesn't just happen overnight. It's not going to happen. Some guru is not going to bless you. Okay, you have to do this healing work by yourself. 
Okay. So you're looking at possibilities that you haven't had before. So you have to pass a feeling of trial and error. And it's so important along your spiritual path. How many times do we have to forget before we remember? And then we remember and we forget again. Plato called this amnesia, that we have amnesia since we enter our body, Plato said, that we have acquired a certain amnesia. So in a way, what we're trying to do is remember our divine self. We're trying to overcome our usual patterns of thinking and remember our divine enlightened way of thinking. So instead of being in your negative self-sabotaging, self-pitying mode, you have to be able to change channel. Somehow you have to change channel. It's really like uh, a telecontrol in the same way that you can change the channel on the television, you can literally do that with yourself. Consciousness is awareness. Awareness is paying attention and noticing. And so 95% of who we are is just unconscious automatic programs. I know it's hard for you to accept, but you are living in robotic mode. You've been practicing the same old thoughts for years and years and years. You're in a kind of treadmill. The first step is to become conscious of your unconscious thoughts. You have to start looking at those hardwired thoughts that you think every day, and they're just circuits in your brains that have been fired and wired. So the, the most important thing is to become aware of it, okay? You just have to sit down, close your eyes, not move, enter meditation at least once a day, and start observing your thoughts, the thoughts that are stealing your energy, the thoughts that are limiting. Just say, hang on, what did I just think now? So when you be able to detach yourself from your usual robotic mode your usual computer program that's been running and running you have to ask yourself who just thought that thought hang on that's not me that's the automatic program obviously that automatic program has kept you alive but what got you here is not going to get you there you have to say, oh my God, look at that computer program. This feeling that I've been living is, you know, guilt or it's um, resentment or anger. Oh my God, I've been living with self-sabotaging thoughts. So you're beginning to objectify your thoughts. You're pulling out of those programs. It's uncomfortable. What I'm telling you is uncomfortable. You have to pull away from your program and observe it almost like a scientist or a curious detective and say, look at that, isn't that interesting? Look at that power. Without judging your patterns of thought, just observing them. That is, that's the first step from moving from fear to freedom. And the first step is that becoming conscious of your thoughts become so conscious of your unconscious self that you won't go unconscious to any more fear thoughts, limiting thoughts. Now get ready because it takes a tremendous amount of energy to do that. It, it, it takes a lot of energy to stay conscious. We are so hardwired into our robotic mode, our obsessive compulsive way of reacting to things you uh, will find it quite uncomfortable to begin with. I'm asking you to interrupt your, your pattern of thinking here. It's a pattern interrupt. And the moments in which you do connect with your higher self and observe your earthly self, what matters the most when you have that transcendental experience is you're gonna look back at all the difficult days that you've had 
And those are the ones you remember. And you'll see how you have managed to overcome things in the past. So you are capable of overcoming these particular insecurities and fears. So believe in yourself that you can reach a higher level. You have evolved over time, but the whole thing is to speed up your evolution. You know, uh, right now, you we have access to so much knowledge and you can use that knowledge. It, it doesn't have to take 10 years of therapy. You can slowly switch perspective as I show on my online course with these optical illusions, you can start switching perspective. It doesn't take a lot of time. It takes the intention to wake yourself up from robotic mode. Do you want to be free? Do you want to be free of your old thinking patterns? That's all you need to know. Do you want to transform your fear, insecurity, anxiety into freedom? Okay, do you want to connect with source? Do you want to be constantly connected with source? As I was saying before, in the Orthodox tradition, we have this thing called ongoing prayer, constant prayer. And this is something that may seem a little odd to you, but if you are constantly connected with the divine energy, with source, with love, with joy throughout the day, nothing will really be able to harm you. It is like creating an energy field around you that nothing can shake. So this is an energetic shield, an energetic pro projection, not a shield to protect you because you're not going to be living in a paranoid state that you need to be protected. It's just you radiate. It's like the sun. It radiates. And people will begin to wonder, what is this shift in energy she has? This is not normal. I, I don't know her like this. People will try to drag you down. They'll say, oh, she's too happy. She's too joyful. She's too peaceful. She's too harmonious. Is she higher than thou or holier than thou? Don't allow these people to drag your energy back, okay? You can connect directly to universal source and then slowly they're even going to begin to want to be in your presence. Nothing will be able to stop you. As soon as for someone who has spent your whole life working on having the perfect body or you know, where you place your body, uh, your attention, is where you, you place your energy, okay? You know this. It's like a gym. You work out in the gym. You work out your muscles. If you keep working up your muscles, you will build muscle, okay? The same is with the brain. The more you practice thoughts of gratitude, thoughts of love, thoughts of peace, thoughts of surrender, you will be able to reach another level of consciousness. You know, just close your eyes sometime, do the meditation, disconnect from all the stimulus that's coming in, disconnect from the schedule, just give yourself an hour, 45 minutes, even 20 minutes, because when you invest in this meditation, you're actually investing in your future. When you believe in yourself, you believe in new possibilities for your life, you believe in yourself. This is a, an hour or half hour of self-love. And then the real meditation actually begins when you get up from the meditation pillow and you're walking throughout your whole life in that attunement, turn to that channel on the television, as I was saying metaphorically. So it's all about refining your uh, radar and refining the signal that you are sending off. So even connecting to this webinar today proves that you love yourself. You know that in the end, what you are seeking is actually seeking you. All right. It's a match. Okay. When you have an uncompromising will, the same way that you go shopping for a dress or to get something or to work out in the gym with the same intensity and same passion, you can come up against yourself and just become aware of that robotic pa pattern.
you know, you have to stand up to your robotic mode, lovingly say that I'm not having any more of this fear. I'm not having any more of this anxiety. Thank you very much for trying to warn me, but I'm not interested. So, you know, it's, it's really about imposing your will and not expecting something outside of you to make you feel better. You can create that joy from the inside. I call it silent joy. It doesn't have to be like a vibrant joy, a ha ha happiness. It's a silent joy, a silent peace that you feel on an ongoing way, no matter what's happening. You're just a more free human being. So as you begin to remove these layers that are stopping the flow of the divine essence inside of you. You become more willful, you become more mindful, you become more conscious, you become more loving. It's its, it's nature, right? All you have to do is remove the emotional baggage, remove um, all the this self-sabotaging thoughts. At the end of the day, if you really want to become wealthy, for example, you can, you know, each day, you know, ask yourself, what did I do today? Um, did I, was I thinking wealthy thoughts today? Was I thinking healthy thoughts today? Um, how did I do today? You should really assess yourself at the end of the day and give thanks at the end of the day, no matter what has passed during the day. And give yourself another chance on the next day. It's kind of like that movie Groundhog Day, where you're given the same test over and over again until you slowly evolve your experience and somehow a door will open. As long as you have that intention to overcome your limiting beliefs and connect with your new life, and really, finally, when you uh, arrive at your abundance, if you, if you know, if you already, if you actually, when you do manifest that money uh, or that wealth, you're going to probably not even care much because you will have already accessed the joy and the benefits of what you think abundance will give you from here and now today. In fact, you're going to start becoming uh, not only wealthy, you're actually earning the right to really feel worthy and feel grateful. That's all you really are wanting. I mean, a lot of people want wealth so that they can feel comfortable or luxurious. Well, guess what? You can feel comfortable and luxurious just where you are here and now. And so the money will come because you will attract it. If you are a person who is comfortable, luxurious, and the money will just come by itself, you know, don't obsess about why you don't have the money. If you do that, you're going to be in lack again. The same with health, health and wealth. It's very interconnected. You know, if you start thinking in a more healthy way, and removing all your blockages, making time for meditation, it's no longer about your health. It's going to be about feeling vibrant and just, you know, freeing yourself of all your limitations. I, I do think it needs work. I mean, but it does need, you know, you have to do the work. You know, everybody wants the results without the work. If you're not in constant prayer throughout the day, even when you're at the grocery store, in the supermarket, stuck in traffic, can you connect with divine energy? You know what? I have a, a certain mantra I repeat throughout the day, and that is elation. Kiri Eleison, perhaps you've heard of that mantra. It's a Christian uh, mantra, but you can use any mantra you like. You know, the Muslims have La ilaha illallah, um, whatever mantra you have, I would be repeating that throughout the day. And I, it, it is a spiritual path. In a way, we are like um, a monastic life, but within society. You're living a spiritual life within um, 
within society you're actually living a spiritual life because you no longer have to be in a monastery to live a, a spiritual life you can live a spiritual life being within uh, the mundane within the ordinary life and that is the challenge that is a, a choice do you want to be split up into a thousand different pieces waiting for the external environment to please you or are you going to be what we call in Greek aftophotos, self-illuminating, connecting with source energy and radiating that outwards to the world? If you're going to wait for that external stimulation to give you thrills, that is a kind of addiction. It is a kind of dependency. Whereas when you are aftophotos, uh, self-illuminating, um, you are completely independent and what happens in this case is you will attract other self-illuminating people and together you can transform your society and your environment and your financial and health situation. So it, I really want to just remind you through this session, I'm actually feeling today like a lot of this information is really being channeled. I, I feel today especially that I've been used, I mean I've been channeling information for many years now, but the more I do this practice, the more I'm not even thinking what I'm saying, it's literally coming right through me. I hardly even prepare for these talks. And this is what I feel that the more one practices, the more this river, this shower of light goes through you and starts to direct your life. So all you really have to do is remove the blocks, become conscious of the blocks, become conscious of the limiting fear-based beliefs and anxiety-based beliefs, self-limiting beliefs, and slowly you too will become a channel for this light, this love, a beacon of light in your um, realm, wherever you are, because you are working for the higher good. Even the fact that you are on this call proves that, that you are a person of light, a person who wants to connect and align with their light, with their love, with their abundance. And the more you go into this, you know, some people, it's kind of like, some people will criticize it, that it's a kind of brainwashing because you're constantly thinking positive thoughts. But you know what? What's the alternative to be thinking anxious thoughts, fear-based thoughts, limiting thoughts, um, thoughts of criti criticism and judgment? I think that's another kind of trance that uh, most people are into. And that's, that's because the biology is like that. As human beings, we are wired um, through our fear we have the fear we have the fight or flight um, limbic brain that still is within us because don't forget we have evolved from the fish from the reptiles slowly we became mammals and evolved but the limbic brain the brain of the reptile is still ruling a lot of our decisions so it's fight flight or freeze and this mode is a very primitive part of our brain. What happens is now through evolution, we've developed the prefrontal cortex that is the, the part of the brain that it has imagination. It can envision a future. And there are even higher centers of the brain that we are not even aware of. And that's what I'm saying. The more you become aware of what thoughts are limiting you, from your, the lower centers of your brain, the more you will connect to the higher centers of your brain, to what is possible, and you'll be opening up to higher levels of intelligence that will slowly guide you. And believe me, there are people who have had near-death experiences, NDEs, and they all, I mean, I have read so many books, many masters, many lives, so many, many, many thousands of people have now, there's been data collected from these people, and they're all saying the exact same thing, that there is love surrounding us, that we're simply not aware of it now through our limited sensory perception, but we are bathing in an ocean of love. So why not connect to that ocean of love and security? That's where the real security can be found. 
So um, if you like what I'm saying and you want to continue watching these uh, Monday uh, channelings, these Monday downloadings, webinars, whatever you want to call them, I'm very happy to, ha to, to have you in the group. I just want to thank you for joining me today for this channeling. And I also want to tell you that if you want to have Q&A, if you want to ask me any questions, enter dialogue, that's a completely different um, webinar. That's every Wednesday. That's Wednesday webinars where we have discussions. And that is, of course, a different level of membership. That's the A-lister memberships. And if you want to find out more about that, go to my YouTube channel. Look up the memberships. We have the VIP memberships and the A-lister memberships. So that's all for today. I want to share with you on this money Monday manifestation. I want to remind you all that we have our once a month retreat coming up on December 6th. If any of you want to fly in from Dubai or from Northern Europe, you're very welcome. We have a program, uh, although the first day is a Friday, um, for people who are coming in from abroad, there's a whole different program, a three, four, five day program for you. So come in, Friday, December 6th for our retreat here on the Athens Riviera. We'd love to have you with us. And this is the beginning of a launch uh, series here where we intend to have monthly workshops in the Athens Riviera. So once again, I want to thank you all for joining. Lots of love and I'll meet you all on next Monday. Goodbye to the Teams meeting room, the Google meeting room, and to my friends here on the Zoom room. Lots of love and I'll see you tomorrow for you. Bye-bye.